welcome to today's 3D print. We're going to have more fun with the FL Sun resin printer. I'm going to show you how to change the FEP film. I'm going to show you how I remove prints from my print bed and give you some tips and tricks for using alternative resins with your printer. Stay tuned! My nice shiny new FL Sun, which is basically a Micromake L2 resin printer. And it did not come with good instructions. And one of the problems I had was that the prints would stick to this instead of sticking to this where they need to stick. That's the build plate, and that build plate lowers into this, which contains the resin. Now, this is, I found out just a couple days ago, this is called FEP. It's basically a plastic Teflon coated sheet. And um, if the burn time the amount of time that the light is on is not long enough, the print will stick to this instead of sticking to the aluminum because it sticks to this more readily, but it sticks to the aluminum stronger. So um, the other thing I learned was that you actually do have to bolt it down. So when you put this vat on, you actually do have to put these back on and bolt this down. Otherwise, it can actually lift this thing up because it's stuck to this and the aluminum. So it has to pull on this to pull the print away from the FEP sheet. And sometimes you'll even hear that little suction sound as it pulls the print away from the sheet. So I finally figured that out. I have to use a longer burn time. I'm using 100,000 microseconds. And that's long enough to stick to the aluminum and not to the FEP sheet. But because I kept sticking prints to the FEP sheet, I had to get the prints off the FEP sheet. And you're supposed to use plastic scraper. This did not come with it. This is just a plastic scraper I had from another printer. It don't work. I could not ever get the prints off unless I used a prying tool. So I ended up using a little screwdriver and I would, as gently as I could, get underneath there and pry the prints off. But a couple of times I turned the screwdriver sideways. Focus, please. I turned the screwdriver sideways accidentally and I poked holes in this FEP sheet. And so I had to use scotch tape to fix it. So on this side, after thoroughly cleaning it so it would stick, I put pieces of scotch tape. This one was leaking, and these two look like they're about to leak, so I put scotch tape on all three. And that affected the print a little bit. You ended up with little holes. Like here, you end up with this little broken area there because it was shining through the tape, which affected it, but that was okay. I still got some amazing prints out of it, including this little bugger here. Yeah, that's that fantasy castle. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to replace this FEP sheet and give you as much information as I can in my videos on how to use this since the directions that come with it are horrible. And we shall go from there. So first things first, this is actually just a sheet of plastic. So if you go on Amazon, link below, you can get sheets of Wanhao D7 FEP and it's the right size for this. So the way this will work is the sheet has to go on here. So you take out all these bolts, and you pop this out, and this sheet just sits on there. You lay the new sheet on, you lay the new the bracket back on, you poke a couple of holes through it, put the screws in, make sure it's straight, a couple more holes, a couple more screws, and go from there to make sure you get a nice drum finish with no wrinkles. So I'm going to now use my, two. I believe this is 2.5 millimeter. Is that what this is? Yes, 2.5 millimeter. Um, hex wrench and I'm going to remove all these bolts stay tuned so there's all of our screws and this metal plate is removed and then the film just pops out it just self molds when you screw it down but that's it I wonder if this is actually molded it doesn't look like it so it looks like it is just done the way they do the other ones flat sheet and it molds when you screw it down some of the screws are a little tight coming out because some of the sheet is in the holes, but that's fine. But I gotta replace this sheet with the new one, so stand by. So basically, I laid the sheet on top, pushed it down a little bit, and then I used a screwdriver to poke a hole here and here and threw it down. I noticed it was a little um, pushed up here, so I pulled the sheet um, taunt and punched this hole, put the screw in, same thing over here, and now it looks like I have a pretty smooth sheet on there that will tighten up as I tighten these down. 
So what you do is you, when you're ready for the next screw, you take your screwdriver and you punch a hole through it. And now you can put your next screw in. If it doesn't stick to your fingers, like mine. And that really is all there is to it. The only trick is to make sure that you don't have any wrinkles. Um, I'm tightening them down about halfway. And then once I get them all in, I'll slowly tighten them all the way down. Think of like a tire here, 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 here. You know, you want to work your way around crosswise. So when you do this one, do this one. When you do this one, do this one. When you do this one, do this one. Try to keep going across star pattern style like a car tire. The idea is to keep it from twisting and distorting this because this needs to lay perfectly flat on top of that screen. There we go. They are all tightened like a drum. Now you take a sharp razor knife and trim off all this excess film. There we go. It's all trimmed. Um, don't forget to punch your holes for the, um, the two screws. So you make sure your screen is squeaky clean. Just alcohol is fine. Then I'm going to clean this and I'll be right back. And then you simply reload it onto the printer, and that's it. You do need to make sure you bolt this down. I'm going to try to find some nuts to use on here instead of these knurled nuts because they interfere a little bit with putting the cover on the printer, which is annoying because I don't want to bump the printer and interfere with the print in progress. Sometimes you open it to check it. That's it. Brand new FEP film installed. I should get much cleaner prints now. Now I'm going to make a print. So, I wanted to show you guys how I removed prints from the FL Sun. I had a print fail this morning. It disconnected for some reason. It actually adhered to here, but then it stopped adhering to here partway through. I think at the same time that I paused it. So, I think um, I did something wrong in pausing it. Didn't let it finish the cycle, so it didn't go back to the same exact point, And so, it began to stick to the FEP. By the way, the, um, the solution to getting the filament off of your FEP film is you take a sacrificial glass and you pour this into here it'll sit right in this glass at a caddy corner once you pour the bulk of it out let it sit eventually it'll detach from the rest of the fep film and you'll have just your stuck print then just pour some alcohol into your basin and swirl it around and eventually the prints will actually pop off and come right off you won't have to mess with it um, clean it out rinse it out really good with hot water then you're going to have to take tissue with alcohol and clean it out multiple times until you get up all the resin residue off of the FEP and it comes out clean again and then you can put it back in I use this to strain it just to make sure you can actually see there's a little bit of residue on there um, particulate matter from this that I did not want getting into the vat so it's clean this way you don't have to waste any resin but how do I get the parts off first use gloves this stuff is supposed to be pretty nasty so you really don't want this stuff on you I don't know if it's actually harmful or not, and I don't want to find out, so play it safe and try not to get it on you. It's probably not particularly dangerous. From what I understand, it's a sensitization thing, like a person who touches epoxy too much eventually becomes sensitized to epoxy. I use my Creality Scraper with the bevel down so that I can get up underneath the part. What I do is I put it up against the part like this. Can you see that? Yes, you can. And then I take a relatively heavy tool like this. I use two fingers to hold the um, scraper in place. And then I... T actually, this doesn't need it. It's coming right off. Huh. Interesting. Okay. This one's coming right off, so I don't have to do this, but I'll show you anyway. Um, for the part, I put the scraper up against the edge of the part. Then I take my tool and I just tap. I just tap it underneath the part. And the part comes off just like that for large surface area parts it can take a bit of a tap to get it off but this is aluminum you're not going to hurt it and there you go the three parts are removed and that's it never ever use the metal inside the fep you will damage it i damaged my first one because i couldn't get it off with plastic didn't know that you could dissolve it with alcohol that's it it is very easy um more videos to come this thing is fun just a quick add-on update, I did discover, to my dismay of course, that you can actually remove the build plate on the FL Sun. You undo the two screws on the top and the whole build plate comes out. 
if I only have one print on there, I still do the method I just showed you because um, I don't want to disturb the printer. And it also, there's always resin on top of it. And so you've got to turn it sideways and wait for it to drip off, or you have to wipe it off and waste the resin. Um, and this stuff's expensive. I'm still having a great time with it. I'm getting some truly stunning prints out of it. This is the Kajai Tower Remix. I got a whole bunch. And I finally figured out how to do multiple prints on the print bed. I go into Mesh Mixer. And well, first I go into their software and I load each file, get it the size that I want, and then hit slice. And that resaves the STL file as that new size. That's important because I don't know how to resize stuff accurately in Mesh Mixer relative to each other. Um, so I do it in there first, get the size I want, and then when I import all of those files in the Mesh Mixer, they're all the correct size. The trick is you got to keep the file size down. Um, so far, I've had luck with up to 600 megabyte files. For some reason, Mesh Mixer puts out some very, very large files. My first file was uh, 1.9 gigabytes, and the slicing software would not slice it. <laughs> um, if you use the Wanhao resin, and uh, by the way, it's milliseconds, not microseconds. I had that wrong. Um, so 100,000 milliseconds for the first layers. And then for prints like this, it depends on how thin the part is. If it's a reasonably thick part, such as if you're printing this, you can get away with 15,000, 20,000 milliseconds. But if you're printing something super thin, like this, that's not going to work. You're not going to get it. Um, I'm also going to have an upcoming video on cleanup of parts. It is tricky when you make stuff that small. But I've been having good luck with the Wanhao resin and these super skinny parts at 32,000 milliseconds per layer. It takes a long time to print, but remember, your print height is your print height determines your print time. So this, I believe, would take about 16 hours to print. And it takes 16 hours whether I print 1 or 10. So if I put 10 of these on the bed, it still takes 16 hours. So what I've come to do is to put together 5, 6, 7, 8 things that I want to print super tiny. And I load them all onto the print bed in Mesh Picture, save that as a combined STL, load that into the Net Control software, and tell it to go. And that way, even though it still takes 16 hours, I get a whole bunch of prints at the same time. Um, because it's again, it's the layer height determines the print time, not the print complexity. The print complexity doesn't matter. 16 hours for one, 16 hours for five, 16 hours for 10, 16 hours for 20. If you can fit them on the bed, just don't let your vat run out. I haven't had that happen yet, but I don't want it to happen because it's expensive. But yeah, stay tuned. This printer is a lot of fun. Right now, I am printing something that Joel's gonna like. That'll be interesting. My first 60 hour resin print. <laughs> Full build height, 198 millimeters. So it's big. Uh, that's it. Stay tuned.